Hey guys, welcome to another quant reasoning video. This is the beginning of chapter six, uh, unit 6A, characterizing data. And so basically what we're talking about is we're talking about the mean, the median, and the mode for data. Um, most of you guys are familiar with this, I'm sure. The distribution of a random variable, of a data variable, it refers to all the different ways that its values can be spread across all the different possible values, okay? So uh, we usually display a distribution with a table or a graph. And so we're not gonna worry as much about distributions as what to do with the information that we are given, okay? So when we're trying to measure the center of a distribution, there are two things about a distribution that we're interested in finding. We're in interested in finding the center of it, which is typically thought of as the average, okay? But we also wanna find out how spread out the data is and the variation in the data. And we'll talk about that in section 6B, okay? So section 6A is about measuring the center of a data distribution. And so there are three different ways that we can measure the average, if you will. We don't ever use average in mathematics because it's too vague of a concept. So we have different ways of measuring what we call the average. Now, what most people think of as the quote, average value is what's known as the mean. The mean is when you take all of the values and divide by the number of values. You add up the total of all the things and you divide by the number you have. So when you wanna find the your, your test average, for example, you take your three test scores and you divide by three, that's finding what's known as the mean. Okay, and that is often referred to as the average or the average value, but it's only one way of figuring an average. Okay, the second way is called the median, and the median is the middle value in a sorted data set. In other words, if you list the set of data from smallest to largest, it is the middle number, straight dab in the middle. So if you have 11 data points, there's one, two, three, four, five. Then there's 11, 10, 9, 8, 7. Then the sixth data point is right in the middle. Again, you have to have it in order, obviously, from smallest to largest. Now, what happens if you have an even number of values? There is no middle number. And so if you have an even number of values, what you do is you take the mean, you take the mean of the middle two numbers. Then we'll do examples here in just a moment. Okay. And finally, the mode is the most common value that occurs. Modes are not typically thought of as averages, but if you have a very few number of data points, so you have the numbers one, two, three, and four, and that's it, and three occurs a lot more than any of the other ones, that would be considered the mode, and three could be representative of the typical or the average response, okay? It is possible for a data set to have more than one mode it's called bimodal if you have two values that are exactly the same number of occurrences and they're the most then we call it bimodal if you have three or four numbers or more than two numbers that occur at the same amount of frequency or if every number just occurs once then we don't have a mode at all okay you do not have to have a mode for a distribution so let's do an example Eight grocery stores sell the PR energy bar for the following prices. We want to find the mean, median, and mode for these prices. So we have eight data points, and we're going to attempt to find the mean and the median and the mode. So how do you find the mean? You add all eight of these numbers up together. 1.09 plus 1.29 plus 1.29 plus 1.35 plus 1.39 plus 1.49 plus 1.59, plus 1.79, right? You add up all of those, how many are there? There are eight total values, even though this value gets repeated, we still count it. And so we get eight and we divide by eight, okay? If you guys plug that into your calculator, then you'll find the value. And in this case, I've already got it done here. The value is $1.41 round it off. And so we have the mean is equal to $1.41. So the average price, if you will, over those eight grocery stores for the PR energy bar is $1.41 as far as what we think of as typical averages. That's a mean. Okay. Now, how do you do the median? 
the median, you have to put things in order. So we list all the values in order. And then we count how many we have. How many we have? We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight of them. We have eight values total. Even though, again, one's repeated, we have eight total values. Well, that's an even number, which means there is no middle number. There are two middle numbers, and you can kind of see how these guys are grouped here. All right? We have three values that are lower, three values that are higher, and then two values that occur in the middle. There is no single middle value. There are two that occur in the middle. And since there are two, what we want to do to find the median, the way that you do that, we take $1.35 plus $1.39 and divide it by two. We want the number that's going to be in the middle of those two numbers. And so that's $1.37. So the $1.37 is the median. Okay, what about the mode? What about the mode? Well, there's only one thing that occurs more than once. It's $1.29. And so that's definitely the mode. Now, as an average, does the mode really work well for this? No, it doesn't because it only happens twice and all the other ones happen once. If $1.29 happened five times out of eight, then we could say that's probably a good average for it, okay? Notice the median and the mean are very close to one another, $1.41 and $1.37. That happens often, and in a good data set, they should be close to one another. But if the data set is a little bit skewed, that's when you run into a problem, okay? So I want you to do the same thing in example two, but I'm going to ask you to do it. So you guys pause the video at this point. Here's a six number data set. There's six numbers there. The number three isn't part of the data set. That's just, it, I pulled it off of a worksheet. I pulled it off of your worksheet, actually. This is problem number three in your first worksheet um, from 6A. And so I want you to take these six numbers and find the mean of those six numbers, the median of those six numbers, and the mode, if it has one, for those six numbers. Pause the video and then come back and we will check your work. Okay, so how do we find the mean? How you find the mean is you take these numbers, all six of them, 34.9, 23.5, et cetera, and we add them together. Um, I am well aware that there are some statistical calculators out there. There's also Excel and other things that will do this work for you. You must show me your work. I must see this. I don't have to see you. You're still allowed to use your calculator to add these up, right? The if you add all six of these up, you get 262.8. I'm totally fine with you using your calculator to add all those up. I don't want you to do it by hand. But you can't just give me 43.8 as the answer with no work. I will not accept it. Okay, because there's too many things. I want you to do this, understand the process. Okay, you got to understand the process. Okay, for the median, what do we have to do? For the median, we have to rearrange these guys in ascending order. So 20 is the smallest. And then 30, sorry, and then 23.5, and then 34.9, and then 34.9 again, 65.8, and 83.7. How many data points are there? There are six. N is the number of data points. N is six. So that means that we don't have a middle number. We have a middle two numbers once again. So these two guys are the low two. These are the high two. And then these are the middle two, okay? And so we need to find the middle two numbers. But when you take the average of the middle two numbers, what do you get? You get 34.9 because they're the same. So in this case, the median is 34.9 because the middle two numbers are the same number. And so 34.9 is the average of 34.9 and 34.9. Uh, along with that, the mode, 34.9 is the only one that occurs more than one time. And so it turns out that the mode is also 34.9. Okay. So hopefully that is pretty straightforward. Now, when you're doing this, again, the mean typically is a great way to measure the average. But I'm going to show you an example where it's not. An outlier in a data set is a data value that is much higher or lower than the other data values, and it can change 
the mean of the data, it does not affect the median typically. And so in a situation like this, we have four contract offers that are zero, and then we have one that's $10 million. So the average contract offer, quote unquote, would be $2 million because you add these five up and you divide by five and you get $2 million. But clearly that's not typical. The typical one actually is four contracts were nothing. Nobody wanted this player or this whatever this is for contract wise. And so the mean goes up to $2 million, but the median and the mode are not affected by this outlier. And so when you have an outlier, a lot of times you want to use the mean, the median to represent the average and not the mean. When we lived in Charleston, South Carolina, if you were looking for the average house, you looked at a median price, not a mean price, because in Charleston, you have two areas. You have the beach on which obviously on one of the islands or on the beach, the houses are much, much more expensive. But then you also had downtown Charleston, which had these historical homes that were 200 years, 300 years old. And those were often extremely expensive, million dollars for a three bedroom house, you know, or whatever. Well, we were looking for a three bedroom house. I sure didn't have a million dollars as a, as a math teacher, but that's not what the average house was. If you weren't living downtown or on the beach, then the average house was maybe $175,000, $200,000. And so that's what the median price range was. Uh, and that was a better representation of the average because there were tons of houses at the $200,000 range. There were only a few at the million, million and a half dollar range, but those are so much bigger. That's such a har a larger number than one, than uh, 150 or $200,000 that it really took, it really took the, the mean up a whole lot. So you use the median instead. Those were outlier data points, okay? So in section two, we're gonna talk a little bit more about uh, the spread of the data. That's the variation. A low variation means your data is very, very close to the middle. A moderate variation kind of looks like a bell curve and a high variation means you're really stretched out and that you have numbers all over the place. The larger the variation, the more spread out the data the less representative the mean is of the typical amount is of the typical stuff, okay? So that's section 6A. Please go through and work the homework problems from 6A in my math lab, work through the worksheet from 6A and B, and again, 6B will be done as well here in a few minutes, and you'll watch both of those together. I would suggest watching both of those together and then just going at it. And uh, as always, we'll answer your questions in class on uh, next week. And let me know if you have any questions before then. Thanks. See ya.